A prequel that nobody asked for to a movie I fucking despise. Forgive me if I wasn't really looking forward to this movie. So, almost f over 50 years after the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, we get a prequel simply titled Wonka. I guess if I'm going to talk about this movie, I should probably talk about the other two adaptations of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I absolutely despise the original. I hate it. I've hated it ever since I was a kid when I saw it. I was... I don't know how old I was when I saw it, but I hated it then. I hate it now. It's just not a good movie. It's cheap as shit. And for all the people that bitch and moan that I like movies that are different from the book, that movie is very different from the book, and I absolutely hate it. Then compare that to the remake, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which, ironically, was closer to the novel, but people pretend isn't, and it is much, much better. The characters are better, including the characters of Willy Wonka and Mike TV, who are both much closer to the novel and have a bit more character to them, and I like the addition of Willy's father. As well, obviously, the visuals look better because there was more money behind it, and it just seemed to have a lot more love and care put into it than the original did. And I know what people are going to tell me, that Roald Dahl wrote the original film. No, he didn't. He was he originally did, but then they used an unfinished draft and had somebody else write the, the script because he was taking so damn long. And, and he technically got a writing credit because he technically wrote it, but he didn't. And he hated that. Like, And he probably would have liked the original, or the remake, because his... Because the Ronald Dahl State, his family, I believe his wife and daughter were, like, the main people behind that movie. And they largely say he would have liked it, so I'll take their word for it. But I wasn't really looking forward to this. Because, again, I don't like the original. Nobody asked for a prequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and the marketing didn't help. These trailers looked awful. These were god-awful trailers. But marketing can be deceiving. And this was the case because this actually wasn't that bad. Shocking, I know. Especially from how much shit I've talked about this movie in other videos. Especially when I did that video, Will Any Upcoming Movie Be Good? I trashed this movie pretty hard. But I'll be damned, it's not that bad. Don't get me wrong, it's not great, it has problems, but... This was actually a decent flick. And now I'm kind of sad that I put it off watching it for so damn long. Now, I will say first off that the biggest problem with this movie is not the movie's own fault. And that's that Willy Wonka ain't Willy Wonka. Because the original version of Willy Wonka, the one from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, is not Willy Wonka. Like, at all. He's supposed to be a very anti-social person and he was anything but. Which is something the remake got super right. And here is mostly the same. And I know that he's technically antisocial because he's been away from people for God knows how long, speaking to nothing to nobody but Oompa Loompas, but he was also kind of socially awkward before that. Here, it's... I don't know how to describe it, because the story is not... It, let's put it this way. It is not at all like what you saw in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's nothing like that. Hell, his father isn't mentioned. He's with his mother in the beginning, and I'm assuming that was deliberate. Because Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, when it came out, the hate boner for it really came out pretty quickly. But nowadays, it seems to be getting, it, it seems to be getting a bit more love nowadays. Now people are largely figuring out that this is more in spirit to the novel than the original one was. Even though people still like the original, I don't. But it's fine. I don't care that other people like it. They seem to figure out that yeah, this is better than people said it was. And this one. This movie is kind of hard to talk about, but I, I I will give up the positives first. I'll bring the positive first. It's something I really thought was going to be bad with the songs, but the songs were actually pretty good. They had nice melodies and clever lyrics. They were a lot of fun to listen to, and we had some from the original. Like It ended with Pure Imagination, which is fine. That's one of the songs from the original that I like. And it also had the Oompa Loompa song a couple times, but and those were ones I hated in the original. I hated those Oompa Loompa songs because they were just repetitive bullshit. Here, they were done a bit more cleverly, and Grant can, and Hugh Grant can sing, I'll give him that. And Timothy Chalamet, I already knew he could sing, but he does a phenomenal job here. All of the singing, singers do. This isn't one of those things where they hired somebody who can't sing and auto-tune the shit out of them. I'm looking at you, Beauty and the Beast. But, but instead, they hired people that can actually act 
and sing, and they all do a phenomenal job. And again, the acting is pretty good, too. Um, surprisingly enough, Keegan-Michael Key didn't annoy the hell out of me. He seems to annoy me a lot in movies and shows that he's in, but here he was actually pretty funny. And I do like that he's, because a lot of, this police officer is, like, obsessed with chocolate and everything, called a sweet tooth. I hate that term so much, because that's just a term for glutton. <laughs> Um, but I like that he gets, like, progressively more fat as the movie goes on. Like, he shows up when Willie's selling all the chocolate originally. He shows up again, and he even says, oh, I've gained, like, 150 pounds in the past two weeks. That was a little, it's unrealistic as hell, but it was pretty funny. And then he's even big, so big at the point of the end where he can't even get out of his fucking car. That joke was kind of funny. And the main competitors in this movie, although this does cause a huge continuity error... Because one of the, the main villain of this is Slugworth and two of the others who make candy. But aren't they still around at the point of the original? Even though they were arrested here for uh, for a bunch of different reasons, really. But weren't they still around in the original? And hell, that contradicts the novel. Because in the novel, the reason he closed down his factory in the first place was because people like Slugworth and all these other candy shops were stealing his, his recipes and everything. So how does that factor in? 20, 30 years down the line whenever the original takes place. I, I don't get that, but it was fine. And, but I will say the villains are probably the weakest part of this because it, it's just your stereotypical businessmen trying to take down the believer. It, it's one of those stories, and it's not done bad per se, but it's, one I, but it's a story I've seen a thousand times, and they didn't really add anything new to it. But I guess it was fine. It was pro but it was still the weakest part of the film. Actually, I will say another weak part is the C the CGI animals. Holy shit, those look bad. Like I'm not expecting Avengers Endgame level CGI here because I'm assuming this movie didn't have a budget of a hundred million dollars. Like most, even modern or not modern, like moderate movies are at a hundred million dollars nowadays, and every big blockbuster has to have at least two hundred million. So I wasn't expecting like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 or something like that, or something that looked good that came out of this year. But these animals looked awful. These were, This was some really cheap CGI. I mean, in some scenes it looked, or in some shots it didn't look that bad. But if you looked close enough, it'd be like, oh, okay, that is not really there. It's not quite as bad as the CGI bird thing from Rebel Moon, but they looked pretty bad. But those were, but like I said, those are the weakest parts of the film. And I will say, the best part of this is, ironically, Willy Wonka himself. He's a lot of fun, even though he's not Willy Wonka. Honestly, I think this movie probably would have been better if you had cut any ties to the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and just made this a movie, and just made this an entirely different movie. You'd only have to tweak the script a little, but it could still be done. And I think it would have been better off for it, because, again, the biggest problems I have with this movie are its ties to the original. But I do like that they actually mention Loompa Land and Oompa Land in this one, unlike the original. So I guess that so I guess points for being a little closer to the book in that department. And like I said, the songs are a lot of fun. The singing's all great. The set design is a lot of fun. And again, when it comes to the candy special effects, those look pretty good. I'm assuming that's where most of the budget went, and not enough for the animals. And um, though another weird thing is that Willie actually has like friends that he works with, and that's good, and that's fine enough on its own. But it's like. And they say where they are at the end of the film, but it's like, why aren't they still working with Willy? I, I, I don't get that, but nevertheless, it does explain where they are, at least, and it's a decent enough wrap-up. Um, trying to think. This movie is a little too long. I will say it's two hours. I don't think it needed to be quite that long, but I didn't really feel it dragging, except for maybe the first 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, can we can we move along here, please? And I like the creative designs of the candy and everything. I like the scenes where he's showing it off to everybody. Probably one of my, one of my, probably, it wasn't necessarily my favorite song, but my favorite song sequence was near the middle of the movie, where he's selling the chocolate throughout the entire play, throughout the entire, like, area. That was a lot of fun to watch. And I, like I said, so the musical numbers are actually well done. This isn't one of the, again, this isn't like Beauty and the Beast, where it's a bunch of people walking around, or Dear Evan Hansen, I should say, it's probably a more accurate uh, uh, comparison, where it's just a bunch of people walking around hallways singing, or just standing in one place singing, with the one exception being Sincerely Me. 
Now, there are, of course, slower songs where the characters are kind of just singing to one another, or, like standing around doing something, but they were still nice songs, and they were sung well, unlike Dear Evan Hansen, where they had them sing live for some stupid reason and kept fucking with the vocals. I will never understand how that movie turned out so bad, but um, pl I've got another video planned for that movie, so we're gonna move on. So, yeah, I guess that's really all I have for Wonka. This wasn't... There wasn't a ton to talk about with this movie, but honestly, that's probably a saving grace, because if I had too much to talk about this movie, it probably means that it was pretty bad, but I'm shocked that I actually enjoyed myself here. Again, this isn't a fantastic movie. It has some issues, but my, most of them were pretty small issues that didn't detract from my experience watching the film. Will I watch it again? I might watch it again sometime down the road. I'll watch this over Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory any day. I'd still say Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is the superior of the three. It's easily the best one. But this one does fall pretty firmly into second place. I'm going to give Wonka a C+. And considering I was, I thought I was going to give this like a D or D-, minus, that's pretty impressive. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this movie, and I will see you all next time. Bye.